Thank you, folks, for tuning in to part three of three of our interview with Charlie Paxton here on Supercars Today TV and that pretty signature there. If you want an autograph of a photo just like this, except for the part three and the Charlie Paxton up in the corner, what you need to do is you need to go to our Twitter page and please, you, you, you need to be a follower of the page and you need to tag at least four of your friends and you need to share the post that we put up for part three of three. Uh, we'll share the link and then we will send you this free autograph copy, which is an original autograph. This here is a copy, obviously, but Charlie will autograph some of these for you before we leave. And you will have a definite part of racing history. And again, to get that free autograph, what you do is you must be a follower of Supercars uh, on Twitter. And we will give that exact address when we get a chance here uh, later on in the show. And go to Twitter and then tag for your friends and then share this link right here. And Charlie, we appreciate you being on the show for part three. Thank you. And this is part three of three, which is what we call show and tell. And if folks would please like and share our videos here, we'd appreciate it. That'll keep us going, keep us trending, and it'll keep us relevant on uh, YouTube. And what we're going to do is make sure that, you know, these, these heroes from our racing past, their memories and their stories stay alive. And speaking of a story, here's you and Dave Dayton. And I don't know where that would be at, but uh, those are two pretty race cars right there. About the same colors. <laughs> yeah. Probably, uh, maybe Dayton. I, I don't know. I don't know. Now, that's after the Camaro, the pony days, right, if I'm not mistaken? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So why'd you go from a pony car to uh, the Chevelle? Well, they had the Lagunas. Uh, and I wanted one, up, so I went and bought one at the junkyard and built it, you know, made a new car out of it. I had to add all the uh, enclosed the windows on the side and minor stuff, you know. But uh, I didn't, I didn't have the car done for Daytona. We had the car done, but I had trouble the engine overheating. So I said, well, we just go down there and watch them. So Pat Vitto and my wife, Pat, we went down there and watched them, and uh, on the way back, that was in February, and on the, she was nine months pregnant, and so on the way back, he kept oh boy. wondering, <laughs> man, if, are you okay? Oh, you okay? She said, yeah, I'm fine, Pat. So we made it back, but uh, that's the year that I drove, uh, that was 76. Uh, and yeah, I knew Lenny Pond, and I was talking to him, he said, why don't you start my car? Start to race my car, and, and, and you get the points. I said, "Yeah, man, I'll do that." <laughs> he won the race, so right. <laughs> he got a pretty good point lead living in Daytona, and I think that year we ran fifth in points or something, you know. But uh, yeah, I met a lot of good people and, and uh, had a lot of fun. Obviously, good to be able to lean on a lot of friends here, but. Um, I'm not supposed to see that. One. I'm not. <laughs> this was sent to me by uh, Brian Norton, uh, and and folks, we appreciate the people that send us mm -hmm. photographs. And just, I don't believe any of these were found uh, online. I believe they were all either sent to me by Charlie and his son, or uh, Brian Norton, who is, uh, I guess, the official, unofficial, whatever you want to call it, historian of ARCA, and. Uh -huh. uh, uh, he'd sent me this. Now, what happened here? If you don't mind, this looks like Daytona and wrecked that, yeah. messed up that pretty race car there. <laughs> yeah, it was Daytona. Uh, I went out early. We were running good and pretty fast, and I went out early, too early. But I went into turn three, and the car spun around real easy, and I said, well, ain't nothing to this, man. I got this made. And then he hit the grass. When he got the grass, oh. it got faster, I think. I think he sped it up about 20 mile an hour. <laughs> mm. But I backed it into the number four wall. And mm. Later on, David Pearson asked me, he said, uh, what happened to you? I said, I wrecked. <laughs> he said, no, I said, the track, that's the east end of the track, and the sun's not shining on it, and it's wet. He said, never go out there early. Well, I didn't know. Well, now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we call these as uh, media members. We call these the wedding shots, and it looks like you're uh, doing yours. It looks like you're on the non-rect side here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It appears. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what made you go to the 72 here? You were 27 for a while, and then you went to 72. Benny. Okay. And the, the numbered style is the same also. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did they have to give you any Lumen, uh, Laguna help at all? Because they were running Lagunas at the time as yeah. well. Yeah. So. They would have probably. But matter of fact, uh, Benny called me. I, I, I changed tires, and I, I, I helped fit the car, you know. And he called me and said, uh, why don't you come up here and go to work for us? I said, man, I, Benny, I'm, you know, I, I guess you can't. You know, I'm going to work at a full-time job, insurance, and all my stuff like that. And we just bought a house. And I said, uh, we can't, I can't do it. And he said, man, think about it. He said, you're pretty agile because we just run Nashville that, that weekend. And I pitted for him. And, uh, of course, I beat the regular tire changer, and he didn't like that. The tire changer didn't. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't. <laughs> Because he was telling me how to do it. I said, okay, I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so Benny called and said, you're agile. And said, you know what you know about chassis and stuff? He said, come on up here and go to work. I said, I think it's going to pay me $175 a week and a house. Which was about what I was making the harvester. You know, it's working. And I didn't do it. I said, no. Without the retirement plan, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I lost a job at harvester anyway. Because it's a plant now. So I've, sometimes I wonder if, what would be in, if we right. You never know. <laughs> that's a, that's a different show. <laughs> yep. What what if, <laughs> <laughs> folks? We appreciate you watching Supercars Today TV. If you'd hit that like and share button, we'd appreciate it. And uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is you coming down pit road after after the spin or not. It looks like there is some damage back there, but uh, that's still a pretty race car. <laughs> Thank you. The, the the color on that and and uh, you know the just the 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 layout the the pinstriping, yeah. but it does look like you got a little damage on the the bottom of that spoiler there. So you might have looks like you've you that does look like uh, maybe uh, after that wreck. That, that was Talladega. Oh okay. I blew out. That's the only time I ever had any new tires. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> I blew uh, I blew an engine going into three, and the car spun. The oil got all over my. I mean, it dumped a lot of oil out. It, it, it coming inside the car and on my goggles. And I pull my goggles down. And I look up, and here comes Woody Fisher around about 200 miles away, heading for my door. And I let off the car, and it, it slid down a little bit, and then I locked the brakes up. He went behind me in the wall and uh, blew out three tires. The left front blew, and that's how it wore the, this part off right here. <laughs> Woody Fisher, there's a, another name from ARCA history, and that. Yep. Uh, Another another pretty race car, that yellow and petty blue car. Mm -hmm. I believe he won Daytona in seventy six or seventy seven, I believe. Yeah, yeah. What kind of guy was Woody Fisher? He's a super nice guy. I've got pictures of him holding one of the boys, a uh, bow, I think, at Texas. And uh I think he, uh, that's another story too. <laughs> we went to <laughs> Texas with him, Chad. Chad was seven weeks seven weeks old. We went to Texas, run a race, and come back. <laughs> oh, the seven! You said seven weeks. Seven oh, weeks old. boy! <laughs> and you're still married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Pat is that. in the background, <laughs> saying, "Oh yeah." <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Well, here's another. You know, the design of this car. The the um, apologies, folks. The the lighting is, you know. Uh, it, it's hard to tell with the lighting here, but the the white and the 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 I don't know you call that baby blue powder blue, but uh, that's still pretty pretty was, color right there. It was big bad blue. It was on yeah. Dodge. <laughs> that's the name of it, big bad blue. <laughs> that's that car is is that Salem right there? Where is that? It's Salem and uh, I'm talking uh, Jack Wallace. Okay, he said he lettered all my cars. Uh, Super nice guy. This is Jack here, you say, right here? At, yeah. Kneeling at the door here talking yeah, to you? Okay. Polish, yeah. <clears throat> okay. What was it like going from those little pony cars to these bigger, you know, I mean, the handling, I, I can't imagine. They were harder. Oh, okay. Because, like I said, we didn't have super speed. I mean, we didn't have a, no power steering. Or, the good brakes. We run three and a half inch drum brakes. <laughs> wow. 
But that car handled good. It did. That was a good car. And all my cars, I had lacquer on. I didn't put enamel. I painted lacquer and then I sand them and buff them. I wanted my cars nice and clean. So Is this 77 here or whether it was 76 70, or 77? 77, 77. Okay. Yeah, Bobby told, talked about, um, you know, same thing, lacquer. You know, him and Gary would, you know, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And they'd buff it off. And, okay, ready for a next coat? Yep. Ready for the next coat. <laughs> So it looks like you're doing some more wedding shots there. That is, I believe you said Salem, right? Salem, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's a pretty car. And I guess right about then would be when you were starting to kind of maybe back off of racing a little bit because. Yeah, it, it just got to where you, you, can't, you can't race without money, not now. And back then you couldn't. But I did the best I could do. That was it. That's all I could do if I wanted to race. And I really did it just for the fun, because when I was in that race car, I didn't have to worry about business or anything. You know, in there by yourself, and man, you got it made. <laughs> He's thinking about that race car. <laughs> or wives yelling at you about seven-week-old going to Texas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, she, 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 she helped a lot. She paid all the bills, wrote all the checks. I haven't written a check in probably 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of lady to be married to. Yeah. Folks, thank you so much for watching our show here, uh, Supercars Today TV. If you please like and share the channel, we'd appreciate it, and hit the subscribe button. Now, we were talking about that earlier, about handling on a racetrack here, this photo here on the screen here, and it looks like you have just poured yourself <laughs> out of race car here. <laughs> yeah, that, that was nice for us. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we uh, ran a 250 lap at some uh, Nashville Fairgrounds. And it rained. It was about 96 or 97 degrees. Oh. And it rained a, just a little bit before the race started. That was, a, it was so humid you couldn't breathe. I came in and had Vitato sitting there. And I, I, took, I took my hand and tried to hit the switch I, I couldn't control my arm you know wow and uh, they gave me oxygen that's one time i never i i, I run the 500 lappers in louisville and salem and never took oxygen uh, they gave me a little oxygen wasn't much <laughs> which little one is that right there sitting next to you guys uh chad, chad. that's chad yeah <laughs> maybe that's what uh persuaded some of them from Really going at it full time, huh? <laughs> seeing, <laughs> seeing Dad spill out of the race car and about fall over. Look at that hardware. Look <laughs> at all that stuff you want here. Yeah, one of them's hers. Is owner. Well, she, <laughs> of course. <laughs> she was on her point. Of course. Now, this is, I take it this is the 75 banquet? Yeah. When you finish second? 75, yeah. I got that. And I, think, uh, I think I won almost as much money as Dave made for winning the championship. Oh, got, is that right? I got a lot of five. $500 checks from uh, Goodyear and, and uh, S&K Tools gave me $500 worth of tools, I think. Wow. And, uh, yeah. Back when the contingencies meant something, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is yeah. That's this, the same hauler we were talking about that you said you got from Benny right that, there? That's his hauler, yeah. Now, do you, I, know you, I know we kind of joked about it earlier, but do you remember – how close the mileage might have been on that or <laughs> no i don't know benny he he had it i know two years uh and we i had it i used it for 70 i used it for 10 or 12 years it'd be hard to say i'd say close to a million probably <laughs> <laughs> who's that good looking guy on the screen there <laughs> uh, some hippie <laughs> yeah right <laughs> <laughs> That stylish hat there. Yeah. There you go. Now now we're getting into the later part of your career, and this is, a, I believe, an Oldsmobile. This would be, right. I think, Talladega, right? That probably, is, probably. That's actually a pretty car. Uh, the paint job is pretty, but that body style wasn't run by a whole lot of guys. No. <laughs> what, what made you choose that body style? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'd run up my old body cheap and bought it. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that car handle on that track? It's okay. It, did, it wasn't great, but it, it was okay. Because a lot of guys complain that that back window, you know, squared off. Yeah. And it didn't direct the air more toward that spoiler. So yeah. I, I can imagine that, you know. 
Yeah, the Arrow Coupes made a difference. The 86 Monte Carlo. Yeah, they made a difference. Do you remember how you did in that race? I don't. No, I run too many of them. <laughs> there's, and there's another odd body style there, the, that uh, Pontiac Grand Prix body style, which right. was, I think, I believe it was a year before they, they started getting popular. But you, uh, as the trailblazer, it seems like you were, <laughs> you know, ran this body style. And yeah. is that Talladega also right there? Probably. Uh, I, I built that before NASCAR even had to let, was even running those cars. You know, that was one of the first tiny cars, the, the, I call them. <laughs> yeah, they call them the downsize cars or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Was that, were you maybe thinking about going to go NASCAR at that time or just thought, you know no, what, that's what I've got available? That car was illegal for NASCAR. But I mean, thinking, well, okay, let's see how the smaller cars go. If yeah. I decide to go, maybe. Yeah, maybe, but just didn't pan out. <laughs> that is a nice looking car though but it is number 12 it's not 72 i guess somebody had 72 at the time uh i think i had two cars at that time I oh i that, see that oldsmobile at the same time oh i see and, uh, so then you were only driving one of those that we just looked at okay yeah. do you remember who was recall who was driving the other one uh i, I can't uh Jerry Norris would have drove it. Oh, okay. And, uh, I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Where's well, been a Garnet little... Dunn? Garnet Dunn. He he okay. wasn't he wasn't an Arca driver. Been a little water under the bridge there, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I have trouble remembering a lot of that stuff, you know. You met a lot of people along the way, though. 1975, yeah. but you didn't start in '75. You started in. You know, big time racing '69, yeah. and the local stuff before that. So yeah, right. <laughs> you're not doing too bad. <laughs> Age creeps up on you. Well, it beats the alternative. These <laughs> <laughs> are still upright. If, if you had, if we had the alternative, we would not be here interviewing you, <laughs> and we don't want that. We're we're happy to have you here. And and uh, again, folks, thank you so much for tuning in to Supercars Today TV with our guest Charlie Paxton here and the part three of three show and tell segment of the show. And I am your host, Kevin Schwarzy. And uh, this one last photo that uh, we were talking about earlier, and I wanted to make sure to include it, the show that uh, uh, your long history with the Bowser family, Jack autographed his part and you autographed your part. (laughs) Maybe talk about Jack a little bit. I know we've talked about him before, but but, uh, like you said, one thing about Jack, you definitely knew where he stood. Oh, yeah. He always told you what he thought. If you didn't like it, go talk to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> did you appreciate that honesty out of those guys? That yeah, kind of Midwestern kind of. I did, and I think the reason. I think the reason he helped me or liked, liked me so well. We both work hard. You know. Hmm. He was definitely a hard worker, but, and that will segue into my last question here before we head out of the show and. Folks, you're watching Charlie Paxton on Supercars Today TV, and we really appreciate he and Pat having us in their home here in the Morrisville area. What kind of legacy do you, do you hope to have left, whether in racing, in your personal life, both, one, other? How would you like to be known? I don't know. Maybe he's just a good guy. Hmm. There's a, There's another... The guy that's sitting beside him, if we have time for it, I got a little story I want to tell you about it. I don't know if I got that uh, that photo up on the screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think I have it on there. I'm sorry, but you can tell the story if you like. Go ahead. His name Pat Vitterto. He's from uh, Louisville. A guy by the name of Mickey Miller called me, and I had him a Camaro, and he said, "You gonna take your car to Talladega?" And I said, "Well, probably." He said, "Why don't you drive my car?" And I said, "What do you got?" He said, "69." Uh, Chevelle. I said, what kind of engine? He said, oh, I got some stuff from Junior. I said, yeah, I'll drive it. Mm-hmm. You get any Junior Johnson stuff, he's got mm-hmm. a motor in it, I'm going to drive it. <laughs> right. He showed up with the ugliest yellow you have ever seen in your life. <laughs> I mean, it was ugly. It had number 72 painted on it with shoe polish. Oh, boy. That car was fast. <laughs> and so... 
Pat went with me, and I said, now, you drive his car. But no, we're going to be lapping you in about seven, eight laps because the car, the Camaro would run about 170. And uh, he said, okay. He had never driven anywhere before a race car. So we, the car was fast. We qualified sixth or seventh, I think. And sure enough, we started the race. <laughs> we started it. And I was going down the back stretch. We, all, we was freight, had a freight train go about nine or ten. It was me and Woody Fisher and Ron Hutchison and Iggy Katona. And so, man, we go in the corner, and I, I seen him. He, he was just coming off two. We went by him like he was sitting <laughs> in a, a little car kind of whoop, whoop. And I warned him about this, the, the air moving around, you know. His eyes, I, they had to be <laughs> big, man. We came in, race is over, and I said, how'd you do? He said, man, it scared me to death. He said, the noise scared him rather than the, the wind moving him. He said he was scared. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My goodness he's the gracious. one that he's, and that's when John gave him the silver dollar for driving a car. Right. He had never even driven a race car before. You know? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, sir, we appreciate you being on the show. Thank you for having us in your home. Ladies and gentlemen, Charlie Paxson, second place in 1975, ARCA points. And for those history buffs out there, you better start looking up your racing reference and, and uh, ultimateracinghistory.com. Yeah, you're welcome, guys, for giving me giving you a free, free plug. And uh, <laughs> check out uh, Charlie's uh, uh, stats there. Unfortunately, he never won a race, but, you know, he was close a few times. And uh, second in points is absolutely nothing to be shabby about. And as you folks notice, Charlie's about to take a swig of that, that soda. And under that, you can see his T-shirt. says Charlie Pax and the racing team. He said uh, he was kind of one of the trailblazers on a T-shirt like that. I don't know if he's got any left, so don't start asking me where you can get any so <laughs> but anyway folks thanks for tuning in and uh charlie and pat thank you so much for having us thank you kid